registrations for, uh, actually for, we started two years ago, uh, actually two years ago this month. Uh, and so we've gotten continued interest in Facebook. Uh, we're going to be doing LinkedIn as well in the upcoming, uh, actually next month. So uh, we've been spending a lot of time on social media because that's what seems to be on everybody's mind. So today we're going to talk more about Facebook. Uh, before we do that, I just want to talk a little bit about the Technology Committee for the Chambers of Commerce in St. Charles County. Uh, so these are the folks that uh, actually put together the speaking uh, engagements and, and uh, you know, do all of the planning for all of these sessions. So I wanted to definitely draw attention to these folks. There are several of you in the room. If you could just kind of raise your hand so everybody could uh, know. And if you guys have any ideas for topics or if you have any feedback, uh, you can certainly get together with any of these folks. Right. So let's go ahead and jump in and start talking about Facebook. So first thing I want to do is um, one of the latest features that Facebook has actually done is uh, any, anybody who has an iPhone that is up to date with the latest iPhone app version on their iPhone can actually go in and check in to an event now. Uh, and you can only do it during the window of when that event is actually happening. So now that it's past 12 o'clock, I can go in and um, I've, I've created an event off of our Facebook page for the Technology Committee. And so I'm going to go ahead and check in and do that right now. Now, one of the things that's really powerful about Facebook is this whole notion of checking in. Uh, when I check in, it basically, uh, I'm broadcasting that to all of my friends. So uh, every friend I have on Facebook potentially could see that I just checked in here. We won't get into all of the reasons why people check in today, but it's a very powerful concept. We will talk a little bit more about it in the second half of the presentation. Um, I guess we jumped ahead here. Oh, no, we didn't. Okay. So, um, the other thing I wanted to do is, uh, right now, our Facebook page for the Technology Committee only has about 20 people. So, anybody who uh, has a smartphone who would be interested in going and liking the Facebook page, page for the St. Charles uh, uh, County uh, Chambers Technology Committee. You can see the name of it down here. If we could get to 25 uh, people liking our page before the end of the meeting, what I'll do is I'll actually demonstrate how you can go in and claim your own vanity URL for your Facebook page. You do have to have 25 people liking your page before you can do that. All right, so Facebook is, uh, it's quite the phenomenon. Uh, Facebook, their public stats say that there are 500 million uh, users, active users. Most people believe that it's well over 700 million people who are actually using Facebook now. But Facebook will only publicly claim 500, uh, 500 million at this point. Uh, obviously, massive numbers of new Facebook users every day. And um, the average Facebook user has about 130 friends. So when I just checked in, uh, you know, if I were just the average user, I, I literally checked in just that simple act of me pushing a button on my, on my Facebook app on my smartphone to check in. I now share that with, you know, on average 130 uh, friends, uh, you know, based on the typical user profile. The next statistic, which I think is just mind-boggling, is that one out of every eight minutes spent online is now spent on Facebook. That's staggering. I mean, there's no other website that even comes close. I mean, not even close. Facebook is also the number one uh, uniquely visited website now. They surpassed Google uh, last spring. So Facebook has become a destination, and therefore that's why it's one of the reasons it's so important to consider for marketing strategy for a business. Um, the other thing is 50% of all Facebook users are logging in daily now. So uh, you need, there, there are a lot of people who this has just become a natural habit. It's almost, it's almost like the new TV, you know, where people will come and they're going to spend time on Facebook just like they, they do to entertain themselves uh, like they do with television. Okay, so there are several ways that um, that you can help your business with Facebook. Obviously, brand awareness is, is one thing, uh, but you can also use it, you know, to go from brand awareness through consideration, um, evaluate, or elevation of consideration, and, and actually buying by using an effective Facebook strategy. Very powerful. Um, it, it does help you create more visibility online. 
So Facebook is a great way to drive traffic to your website or to your blog. It's a great way to promote the fact that you have a blog that exists and get people to subscribe and, and, and read what you have to say. Um, it, it's also a great way to uh, engage with people. And engagement is really what it's, it's turning into at this point with Facebook. So the next thing I want to talk about is really strategy. Facebook, um, this is, this is the thing that I think most people skip, because Facebook is really pretty easy to use. It's really easy to just jump in and start posting right away, and not, but, but without any, any purpose. Um, and, and there are certainly, you know, I certainly wouldn't discourage anybody necessarily from doing that, but if you're thinking about using Facebook for business, you've got to think about what it is you're trying to accomplish with Facebook. Um, and so as, as Denny and Scott talk today, our, our, our two other presenters, um, they're going to talk about how they've come up with their strategy and how they've created an effective uh, Facebook page for their respective organizations. First thing you need to do is you need to think about who your target audiences are. And I, and, and I did say plural audiences. Um, you want to think about creating content that's going to appeal to each of your core target audiences. You also want to think about when you need to post to effectively reach that target audience. So let's say that you're a, uh, a retailer and uh, your, your, your target customer base are teenage girls. You've got, you really have two huge target audiences. You've got the teenage girls who come into your store and, and buy your products, but you probably also have their parents that you really want to come up with a strategy to, to build a relationship and, and help build awareness about the fact that your store exists and the different products and, and services that you have to offer. So just a simple example, but you know the obvious thing is the people who walk in the door every day, but there are other people that you need to start building a relationship and expanding your reach. And so it's really important to identify who those folks are. The next thing is uh, really Content. What, what type of content do you need to create to get people to engage with you? It, it's not just enough to post content. You really want to try and get people to do something when you, when you post that content. There are, there are very simple things that people can do, like clicking the like button anytime you create a post. They can say that they like it just by clicking the like button. But you also want to get them to write in comments and, and, and expand upon the conversation. That's hugely important. And that's that's a, that's something that um, is is just, that's probably the number one thing you really need to think about in terms of strategy from a content perspective. Also, think about your schedule. Not only in, in terms of uh, when you need to post to reach your different target audiences, but also put it on a calendar, adhere to it, make a commitment to uh, to do it just as you would do a variety of other tasks. If you don't put it on a calendar. Time is going to come and go before you know it. You're not going to get to it. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we see is frequency of posts. It does play a very important consideration in how visible you actually are using Facebook. And we'll talk a little bit more, more about that here in the second half. Wanted to make sure we explained a couple of um, key points. There's a personal profile page. You have to have a personal profile page to create a business page. So in this case, we used Denny as our victim. And here's his uh, personal profile page. In order for him to create a business page for Bogey Hills, he had to have his personal page. So uh, he's the administrator of this page. Uh, so uh, it, the nice thing about what Facebook has done is there is a separation here between you personally and what you post personally versus what the business posts. And that was by design. And you don't get that with a Facebook group. You only get it with a Facebook page for business. So that's a, that's a really important consideration. If, you've, if, you're, uh, if, if you created a Facebook group, um, you're, you're gonna have limitations and, and actually your, your own uh, personal information. But I mean, I shouldn't, personal information, not in the sense of any security concerns, but just, you know, more information than you might want to disclose about you personally if you're using it for business purposes uh, could be disclosed if you have a group versus page. Does that make sense? Okay. The other awesome thing is 
this, this whole notion of when people like a business page, they're basically giving you permission for your business to post content on their Facebook wall. So it's a permission-based strategy. Very, very important. People, um, as you guys are probably aware, they, uh, they're, they're finding ways to avoid a lot of different kinds of advertising. Uh, you know, on a, on a TV, they, they DVR a lot of TV commercials. Uh, they don't listen to radio stations as much. Maybe they listen to XM or maybe they listen to their iPod or something like that. Uh, people are finding ways to avoid unsolicited marketing tactics. So when you get somebody to give you permission to share your content with them, I mean, that's gold. So you want to really take advantage of that. That's got to be part of your fundamental strategy. And like I said, if, I'll check here while our other speakers are talking. If we do get to 25 fans um, on our uh, technology committee uh, Facebook page, then what I'll do is at the end is I'll demonstrate how you go in and create a uh, vanity URL. Okay, I think I've talked some about this. Um, obviously, it, it, how many of you have used Facebook at this point? Okay, so most of you are going to be pretty familiar with this. This isn't that different from creating just a personal uh, profile. You do have the ability to create your information. Uh, you do have to publish the page and make it visible. People become a fan of your page, although it may, now they call it liking, but some people still return, refer to it as being a fan of your page, uh, as opposed to being a friend for a uh, personal profile page. And uh, you do have the ability to control uh, the privacy of that page. Sometimes it's a little hard to find where you go create that page. So if you, you can always just go to facebook.com forward slash pages and it will walk you through the process. You can also have as many pages as you want. There's, there's no restriction. Uh, I, I don't know that that makes a whole lot of sense, but if you, you know, like if you had three different business locations, you might choose to have a page for each of those locations or you may just have a single page. It's really just what you're wanting to try to accomplish. So, um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to turn it over to Scott Tate from St. Charles Chamber. They've done a phenomenal job, I think, with using their Facebook page. They've got, uh, you know, a bunch of people who, uh, who have liked the page. And, and so Scott's going to talk about his strategy and how he's been able to accomplish what he's done. What he's done. Thank you. 